What's up guys? <clears throat> Welcome back to another Dark Souls 1 lore through. Um, so yeah, I went and I leveled up in the uh, Chaos Servant Covenant. Um, I'm a Chaos Servant 2, if you see, plus 2 if you see on the Covenant on the right hand side. And for that I got a new um, I think I've got Chaos Storm. Yeah. Uh, Pyromancy, so let's read that. Art of the Flame of Chaos, which engulfed the Witch of Isolith and her daughters. Erect localized Chaos Fire Pillars. The Witch of Isolith, in an ambitious attempt to copy the first flame, created instead the Flame of Chaos, a twisted bed of life. So... Yeah, she was trying to copy the first flame. She was trying to extend the age, or extend for the first flame, extend the age of fire, etc. That's a, another example of saying that. They're also saying that the flame of chaos is the bed of... <laughs> I have such a short memory span. <laughs> the twisted bed of life. So we, we know it is the bed of chaos is the boss fight, but it's the flame of chaos. Um, it's probably just a translation error. Um, so yeah, I'm back here at the Sunlight Altar uh, for a couple of reasons. Obviously, you can see that uh, Solaire is there. The other thing I wanted to do now that we, um, you know, were in Orlando and I was pointing out that weapon, I just wanted to take a look again and, and just see um, to, to show, uh, you know, how similar these uh, spears were and how nothing else is similar. Um, the other thing is is that, you know, I, I believe this to be the statue of the firstborn, and uh, if Ornstein was the firstborn or if whatever, you know, if they were related, that statue would have been destroyed as well. I didn't mention that. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, after we meet Solaire in Ann Orlando, we meet him back here on the, on the bridge. And this is my favorite dialogue uh, for, of Solaire from the whole game. So let us gaze up at the sun and uh, listen to what he has to say. Hmm. Uh, oh, hello there. Forgive me. I was just pondering about my poor fortune. I did not find my own son, not in Anor Londo, nor in Twilight Blight Town. Where else might my son be? Lost Isolith, or the tomb of the Grave Lord? But I cannot give up. I became undead to pursue this. But when I peer at the sun up above, it occurs to me, what if I am seen as a laughing stock, as a blind fool without reason? Well, I suppose they wouldn't be far off. <laughs> so that's the line right there, which I wish he would have said um, the first time we talked to him. But he said, I became undead to pursue this. I mean, this is a very serious mission that this guy is on. Oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Oh, the So, I wonder why he is standing by the firstborn's statue. Very mysterious. Um, I think I might want to try to look at some other armor. Um, uh, because I have another... Balder armor. I'm trying to find something that's at least somewhat... <laughs> equatable. Like, I mean, I, I, I feel like... You know, anything that's way better is obviously uh, way heavier. Um, I 
shadow garb. I'm interested in this, but it's just it's just worse and everything except for resistances. Am I able to do something like this? What is my 90, 45, 23, oh wow. Um, if I were to change up to, what is this, three? It's a linear scale, so okay. What is this? Three five, and it's forty. Wow. Yeah, I feel like oh, this is pretty good. Oh, it's not forty. What else am I talking? It's twenty nine. Um, so, yeah, why? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like, uh, yeah, that's just too slow for me. I mean, if I keep taking off stuff, then it's just like, I'm not wearing armor. I, I feel like for my, um, uh, movement, I'm wearing the best leather, uh, best um, armor in the game, so I guess we could mix this up for fun. What is this? One five, twelve. Man, things are just. Where are we at with it? Yeah, we're pretty much at the limit here. Let's see. Oh! Oh, that's way better. But that's already enough. Where was that at? That's... <laughs> it's a less than 1.2 with decent Seven, eight. Okay. So with the Balder Helm, we've pretty much done it. Okay. Well, sorry about that little detour. Okay, so we have um, gotten everything we need, and now we're going to head down to... Um, Quaylax Domain. Let's see if he says anything now. Oh, hello. What is it that you need? Don't think he does. Have you heard oh, here. of Lost Quelana, an inhuman witch who wanders the poison swamp? Only no one has ever seen her. So who really knows? But what if she is another of the Quelag sisters? Our fair lady would be greatly comforted by her presence. I've seen her. I know her. She's my teacher. And she sent us on a mission. A mission that we are about to fulfill. We are trying to kill the bed of chaos to free her... her mother and her sisters. Um, uh, do I have any meaningful arrows? Bolt, bolt, arrow. <sighs> Sixteen large arrows. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> the bed of chaos, we're just going to, uh, I mean, I'm going to try to do my best to do it in one go. Um, I've certainly done it before, and I do do it with the use of arrows, but it might just be that I, you know, 
you know, <laughs> do it three times and just do each part of it. So, yeah, uh, I guess um, there's a, probably a good way to see this here, because we're not going to see it very well uh, once we start fighting. <clears throat> but yeah, someone talked about a molten um, demon or something that watches over the demon ruins or whatever. And, uh, yeah, we can only see the tentacles. I suppose it's probably worth it to try to come out here. I just love the scale of this area. Like, it looks like you could get whatever, but as you start walking through, you just realize, like, that's so far away in the distance. <laughs> like, it's so huge. You look around, that's where you rang the bell. And yeah, like this whole area is just takes forever to walk through. So yeah, we can't really see it here. I mean, we can see all these lesser Taurus demons, and there's a uh, Capra demon over there. So we're definitely getting closer to the chaos where all these things were formed. Um, but yeah, there's a molten <laughs> monster there, and, and he's actually creating all of this... Um, He's creating all of this uh, lava here. And the important thing to know, because I'm going to use the exploit, I'm going to... This is not a fun fight to do normally, <clears throat> like in the normal way. It's just, you know, basically stand behind a rock and just wait till whatever. But you, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to outline what I'm going to do here. <clears throat> is that I'm going to go um, grab uh, um, items over there and the, the demon is going to get mad and it's going to come over here and I'm going to run back towards the fog gate right here like stand right by it and it's going to come to here uh, you can see where the lava is pouring over the edge and it's not going to be able to chase me it's, it's going to have to jump <laughs> so what it does is it jumps okay yeah these guys are coming um, it jumps over onto the edge and, and hangs on with its arm, and then I just have to hit his arm a few times, and he loses his grip, and he immediately falls down to his death. Um, down there, and yeah, down there we can see the demon ruins, and we'll be exploring that in a second. Um, <clears throat> I like that there's a missing texture here, I think. Like, to me, I think, like, the texture that's right there, that stairs, is supposed to be here, and they just didn't put it on here. I don't know. Um, but anyway, this guy has a very interesting name. I guess it won't show until we offend him. I guess we can take a good look at him then, too. another <clears throat> kind of atypical boss fight I suppose if you can kind of walk in and uh, yeah there he is I really love how like sad he looks like they did a real good job with the uh, the design just across the board obviously but I just love how he has so many eyes, and yet you can still see the face. And you can see here that the flames kind of coming off of him are all written in those runes that we see written everywhere. Uh, and we also will see those in the Bed of Chaos fight. So I think that has to do with the what the chaos is. But there is a woman here. You can see it's got the uh, cloth over the chest. And uh, the kind of key thing here that we'll see, we'll read these items once we leave, but um, he's watching over this person. 
who he has a relationship with. And once we desecrate her uh, grave, he'll start getting angry with us. Oh my lord. No sense in wallowing in it. <laughs> um, now I cannot do. Now I cannot do the kill. <sighs> now we just have to fight him normally. And uh, I don't want to do that. This is just one of those very uninteresting boss fights. And. Um, once you do this, he will no longer try to chew. <laughs> I love how I, uh, I, I I laid it all out. I explained it in great detail, what I was going to do, and painted the picture. Um, and now I'm unable to do it. Um, pretty sure. And I mean, I need to get my stuff because, I mean... So, Ceaseless Discharge does a couple different things when you, uh... Okay, 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 okay. Where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? Are you... Okay. So we're basically just gonna die over and over again. Yep. Perfect. Alright, well, let's hope that he's slow on the uptake here. He's just gonna blow fire at me, I feel. Pretty sure that you can't do this after the first time. <sighs> So yeah, the way to do this, uh, I mean, I guess this is cheesing or whatever, but the way to do this, I think properly, I mean, I don't think there's any real proper way to do this. Interesting, that's the sound of the... What is going on? That's the sound of the giants in Dark Souls 2. I have no idea what's going on here. Um, I'm going to attempt to come back here, I guess, and see if we can do the trick. I don't think we can do it once we've started the fight. Oh my god. Well, I guess this is, uh, I'm underleveled for this area, I guess. Um... I mean, I just beat this game well, with a sorcery build where I did not level up my vitality once, so I'm not really sure where um, I'm struggling with this. I guess I'm just not as familiar with the, uh, the whole mechanics of the game as I thought I was. But yeah, I mean, I can't... Uh, I mean... <laughs> I've only beat this boss two ways. Um, if I can't do either of those ways, uh, then I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Um, 
So I'm going to attempt this normal way uh, again. I don't know if there was a weird glitch or something, but... Um, Yeah, I mean, obviously this is working now, but yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed that I couldn't show you the cool one. Oh, like really? Oh my god. It's this thing about greed, man. Like, I'm like, I don't need to heal there because it's just gonna <clears throat> kill him in one hit. Nope. There we go. Um, I'm going to read the uh, stuff that we got and see why that guy was getting so mad. Goldham Black Hood. Warned by the witch, warned by the witch Quailana of Isolith, mother of Pyromancy and Dead of Chaos, she wore this Goldham Black Hood before the Age of Fire and offers strong resistance versus fire, poison, and other perils. Uh, that's really weird. So... Hmm. So, I mean, we know Quailana, and we'll speak to her again, but apparently that's hers. I, I, what I always had heard, and I guess... <laughs> I didn't realize that's what it said, but I had always heard that Quail that was a just another sister of the one another daughters of chaos, and so that ceaseless discharge is the brother of the seven sisters. So, um, but it said Quailana, which. I mean, I don't think it's hers, because we talked to her, and I could go up there and talk to her, but uh, I won't, because um, we will talk to her again, uh, but I'm not going to waste the time. I'm going to turn human, however. Um, but anyway, so when we were talking about finding the seven daughters, we actually need them all in this game, so I was just... Um, I was thinking that uh, that was supposed to be another daughter and not Quailana. Um, but anyway, so we know Quailana, the Fair Lady, and Quayleg. We know that there's two in the uh, Bed of Chaos. Or I'm saying that there are. And that's five. And then this would be the sixth daughter. Um, and then there's a seventh. And then there's that guy that was the brother who uh, became, you know, 
he became a, a very screwed up chaos demon. Uh, there's a bunch of items over there, and there's a bunch of demons and stuff like that. We will uh, we will go there later once we get another item. Um, there is an item there that we should probably get, but um, it's not uh, important all that much right now. If I could face um, the Capra Demon right now, I believe that he would die that easily. I believe that's pretty much the same health as a normal Capra Demon. Don't know, though. I'm sure that's easily to look, easy to look up. I guess they are called the lesser Capra Demons, but yeah, so we're going to come over here. And because I'm human, we are going to get invaded by Kirk again. Who again is said to be a Dark Wraith, but I mean, come on. He's in the realm of the Fair Maiden. Come on. Just, just heal. Come on. Oh, please, please. I've never died to Kirk. <clears throat> uh, in my entire history of playing this game, I've never died to Kirk. Any version of Kirk. Any time that he, uh, he uh, invades. That's, I mean... It's not something I should get disappointed about, but, you know, just surprised. I do want to take him out because I want to get his stuff and at least read about what's going on with him. I never know when to drop down here without taking damage. <clears throat> All right. So he dropped his shield last time. We get more humanity, and we get his barbed straight sword, which is cool. Um, <clears throat> the choice weapon of the infamous Dark Wraith Kirk, also known as the Knight of Thorns, for the gnarly spikes on his favorite weapon. This rifle sword deals only thrust attacks and causes heavy bleeding. I'm going to go fight these guys. Psych! suppose I should, you know, be careful here. A little bit. That's a cool move. But it only attacks in very slow, precise manners. I do have 62,000. 
Might as well level up uh, health at this point because I am just dying all the time. Oh, I wanna. Might as well kindle this. Although we're at 12 at this juncture. Okay. Oops, <laughs> I hit the wrong button there. Um, I'm going to take these guys out here because I'm going to uh, do one Homeward Bone run with uh, grabbing an Ember up here. Oh. I'm surprised um, in this playthrough how many uh, like things that happen that have never happened before. Um, like, like if that happened like once every twenty times, I'd be like prepped for like, oh, don't roll on that area or whatever. But I just this playthrough has been really interesting because I. Uh, seem to be, I guess I'm probably just nervous because I'm recording, but, um, oh, I kicked, great, yeah, I think these guys die in three hits, so, the only thing that sucks right here is that they push you off the cliff, so, oh, man, So you got to like, as they're dying. So like, don't stand between them and the cliff because their skeleton still exists until they just like, after they disappear. Great X. Do we? Yeah, we read it because we. Uh, I believe that's what. Uh, I think that's what. Uh, yeah, that's what. Uh, why am I can't think of it? Shiva. That's what Shiva has. Yeah, this is not a fun. <laughs> way to get back, but we're just going to grab this large flame ember. Ember required for weapons, weapon ascension. Large flame ember used for in ancient rites. Handled only by blacks with knowledgeable and ancient methods. That's very interesting to me. Um, we're going to meet the blacksmith that uses this and um, we're going to learn a bit more about him. Um, it's not the most, you know, fascinating lore of the whole series, but it certainly um, ties a few things together, which I think is kind of cool. So once we get down to the um, the Tomb of the Giants, we'll want to talk about that. And yeah, now we're going to go fight my... I don't really like this boss. I mean, this is pretty much the stray demon that we fought. What's my weapon durability at? 63? Okay, that's fine. Um, this is pretty much the stray demon, but, um, you know, it's just... Oh, I guess we gotta go up here. I think... Yeah, we gotta do this before anything else. Um, might as well grab this hero's soul. 
But yeah, so what we're doing <clears throat> here, why I leveled up to Chaos Servant 2, is we uh, we need to come down here and we need to kill all of these maggots. These sunlight maggots. And uh, there's one in particular that <laughs> doesn't respawn and apparently killing it uh, makes it so Solera can do his quest. Um, this isn't the best, um, you know. Yeah, that's interesting. They drop sunlight metals too. So if you wanted to farm those without online play, you can. But yeah, I mean, this is actually technically a, uh, a shortcut to, uh, I don't have to fight the Fire Sage Demon, but I, you know, obviously I'm going to. Because, you know, lore. And there's a Crystal Lizard, too. Come on. Get that twinkling, just in case we need it. I actually don't think we will. But yeah, we killed all those bugs. Uh, so the idea here is that if you... Let me get the sunlight maggot. Oh, the sunlight maggot is a thing you wear on your head that lights up the area, which I, we need for the fallen giants. A loathsome parasite that inhabits Lost Isolith. It is completely immobile, yet still lives. When worn on the head, it emanates blinding light, which is why it's known as the sunlight maggot. Um, but yeah, if we kill that, we uh, save... Um, we save uh, Solaire from his terrible fate of becoming hollow right there, and then we otherwise we would fight him hollowed out at that point. So, um, just doing him a favor and also helping my chances at the uh, forest or forest of fallen giants, the tomb of the giants. All right, now. Let's try this boy. Oops. That always comes down slower than I think. There we go. Good. Yeah, so, I mean, this is definitely like a criticism of this game that people have given is that that these are just recycled uh, bosses. Like, this is literally the same. Alright. Oh, that's so slow. That comes out just... It's pretty much the same as the stray, but he's more more powerful, has more health, and um, then there's all these trees in the way, which really just kind of screw me up when I'm rolling around and doing all that. But yeah, so he drops the demon catalyst. Let's look at that. Oops. Demon Catalyst formed from Isolith Molten Rock can be used as a fire weapon. The Demon Fire Sage was the first demon and the last master of the original fire arts before the Witch of Isolith was engulfed by chaos, creating pyromancy. So there's a guy on YouTube I saw where he gives like a whole linear timeline of everything and he kind of talks about what happened before what. But I believe that all demons um, or sages, all these like stray and uh, asylum and, and the demon fire sage. 
I think they were all um, fire sages and all knowing pyromancy before pyromancy really was a thing. Um, so, I don't know. Just a little little insight into the timeline of the whole thing. I mean, it's a little bit convoluted. It's kind of hard when so many things happened in the past to kind of be like, okay, like, was this something that happened? Like, is that demon just created recently? Or is that something where, like, that was at the time they found the first souls? Or, you know, what was going on? So... So yeah, I just wanted to open up this uh, elevator, which is kind of a weird elevator. It seems to like work with magic of some sort. Um, I don't know who would have created that. Um, I'm gonna rest here. Come down. But I don't know, maybe if we look, the the same runes are in the center of this. Yeah, they could be. So it's almost like this is powered by the chaos or whatever. Oh, just a, kind of interesting. All right. Don't follow me. All right, this is another fight <laughs> I don't like. Um, I guess there's a lot of fights I don't like <laughs> in this game. Um, but I think that in particular, like this whole area is, uh, was kind of rushed and um, doesn't really do, you know, the other game, parts of the game justice, so. Um, you know, people talk about Dark Souls like it's a perfect game, and it's not. Um, however, I think that, you know, what's kind of interesting about it is that um, it, it does kind of like really nail an atmosphere and it really nails the gameplay um is there an item here i could have sworn there's an item here just like a soul um i you know i think it nails the gameplay and the atmosphere that you know even the later games don't fully get so um I don't know. Even though it's got some really bogus boss fights in, in this area in general, it just doesn't look as nice. Uh, some of the enemy things going on in Isolith here, are, you know, after the Centipede Demon are kind of questionable. Uh, I still think I can say this is one of my favorite games, if not my favorite game. Just because, you know, it's not all about each individual thing. It's about the overall effect of it, so... So I don't know if I'm gonna have to actually do this, or if... Yeah. Let's try it. Oh! I guess that kills you instantly. Should've healed. Let's just try it with, uh, with Solaire. Uh, I guess I'll pop another Humanity. Um, I usually don't do this with Solaire or anything, um, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to, like, play out his storyline. You don't need to do, you know, like, in Dark Souls 2, you need to summon and have them survive for 
um, you know, for certain stories to be completed. But for this, you know, it's just a, bene a bonus, but, you know, might as well. But I think, you know, I don't need to go over into the second area because I can, like, distract him, essentially. Now let's do the thing where we can get... I suppose this is probably a stupid idea. Hopefully Solaire comes out here. There we go. Alright, what are you doing, Solaire? Tail off, cut the tail out, got the orange charred ring. Oops. Yeah, I mean, I can use Solaris essentially a distraction. Oh, wow. That was a lot of damage. I think that was the bleed and, and a hit by. Uh, Solaire or something. Wow. Okay, get out of get out of the flame, Solaire. All right, well let's. Uh, oh, we got sunlight metal. Let us. Um, yes, that I know. Let us um, put the ring on and read it. An orange ring enchanted by a witch reduces lava damage. Since his sores were inflamed by lava from birth, his witch sisters gave him this special ring. But fool that he is, he readily dropped it, and from that spot a terrible cent centipede demon was born. Man, everything I know about Dark Souls 1 lore is a lie. I mean, I've always been told that the Ceaseless Discharge is the brother. I've never heard anything about the Centipede Demon, but clearly that's the brother, or a brother. I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting that, uh, you do the lore through yourself, you just find little subtle things. Why? Why? After all this searching, I still cannot find it. He's so bummed out. Why? After all. Yeah, he, I mean, he's, at this point, he has nothing to say. Um, it's Kindle. <laughs> We're gonna have to use these, uh, meme handy somehow before we just end up losing them sillily. All right, let's go. Now, yeah, as I was saying about Isolith, I mean, so this is Isolith and, okay. Really thought I put the ring on. You guys were probably all screaming at your screen. <laughs> um. Yeah, so Isolith, um, this definitely was an area that was not completed. Um, like, just from a gameplay perspective. Um, oh, wow. I've never seen one of those guys running around like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean... <sighs> This is just silly. <laughs> um, it's not visually compelling all that much, and you know, it just basically they took this like enemy, this you know, which doesn't have a lot of like I don't know lore sign. Like I don't know what these things are, um, but uh, they just really copied and pasted them. Like, and just was like, we'll just put them all over this place. 
Um, you know, it's all right. You know, not every. It's like every good album out there has that track on it where you're like, what? You know, if only this track wasn't on it, it'd be the most perfect album. So, this is this is that track in Dark Souls. And to cap it all off, the bed of chaos, which I'll at least commend them a little bit for attempting like a different type of boss. But um, yeah, that's about all I can say about that. Outside of that, it's not fun. Just chugging through this humanity here, just getting everything all kindled up. Which is good, we gotta find some use for it. <laughs> Alright. There's another hue issue going on in Knights of Lith. Um, yeah, I mean, I wish I could say more about this area, too. Like, I wish I could be like, oh, there's the monster of this, and there's the that, or... I mean, but, yeah, I mean, it's lava. It's an old city. I think Isolith was the name of the queen. We've talked about that. I mean, this is the city. It's now just completely destroyed by the chaos and the lava and the fire stuff. Um, and there's all these, these guys, which I think are mini demons, like the kind of, like the fire sage demon we just fought, in a sense. I mean, that's what I'm going to say. They look like they could be similar. There's this item over here that often gets left by the wayside. It's a good amount of souls. These guys chase after you. No, they just completely F off. So, I mean, these are uh, interesting beings here. They're obviously formed for the chaos, too. And they actually can screw you up pretty bad, but one, you know, on the stairs. Ooh, that's kind of a rare drop. That's, uh, they're not too bad. Um, so we were talking about where all seven of the daughters were, and we've now accounted for six. We have, you know, Quailana, Quailag, the Fair Maiden, the two sisters, the one that Ceaseless Discharge was looking over, and now what has been referred to in the, um, in the, uh, Japanese as Grana. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Kill her before Kirk. I almost killed her in one hit. And... Okay. A little couple of little things that happened there. So anyway, this... Uh, if you read the Isolith Cat list here. It'll say, Catalyst of the Witch of Isolith of long ago, when her daughters were still flame witches, before they were engulfed by the Chaos Flames. Before the birth of Pyromancy, their wands were mediums for sorcery, but knowledge of this flame sorcery has long since found, vanished. She also, if you saw, was using the, uh, cha the Chaos Whip, Um, which we can find over here. So that, that, this indicates to me that, you know, she, this Grana, um, Karis Fire Whip, was, res oh wow, another <laughs> rareish drop. Um, she was just residing around here and she 
that's where she kept her great chaos fireball. But it says, Art of the Flame of Chaos, which engulfed the Witch of Isolith and her daughters. The Flame of Chaos can melt stone, producing a short-lived short -lived lava club. Yeah, so everything we know about these guys is pretty much from the Japanese. But, um, yeah, and so that's the seventh witch. Um, again, that is the Japanese describes her as Grana. Um, this just says the daughter of chaos. Um, but yeah, um, before we jump into here, um, I don't think there's anything else here. I mean, anything else lore significant. Um, but yeah, before we do that, I'm gonna... We're gonna take a break and, uh, we're going to finish this up in the next episode. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we have to do here. Um, we have to do... Uh, um, Sigmire's quest line, and that line is... And that story it requires that I get some stuff, um, now that I think about it. So, I'm just going to grab this. Oh, okay. That's hard to get. Uh, I just think that's a soul, though. I don't think that's anything in particular. So let me get out of harm's way, and then we'll uh, we'll continue in the next one. You know what? I'm gonna go back. We're just gonna hit the the uh, the witch at a different time. We're gonna grab. Um, Kirk stuff, and we're just gonna get arrows and do all this stuff. So, um, until then, in the next episode, see you later.